Welcome everybody to this presentation on the Vet Compass program. This is presented by Dan O'Neill, veterinary surgeon and epidemiologist at the Royal Veterinary College. I was a vet in practice for over 20 years and then returned to the Royal Veterinary College to help develop the Vet Compass program, which uses veterinary clinical data to try to improve the health and welfare of companion animals. So what is Vet Compass? Well, Although in essence it's a database, uh, it really is a philosophy. And this philosophy um, expresses the belief that veterinary surgeons during their working lifetimes accumulate a vast wealth of clinical experience and knowledge. And somehow if we can harness this uh, vast wealth of knowledge, we can use it to improve companion animal welfare and scientific knowledge in general. But of course this philosophy does beg a question Surely we already know almost everything there is to know about the health of companion animals. Well, this was the question I posed to myself back in 2009 when I was still in practice and which led me to leave practice and return to the Royal Veterinary College to develop that compass. Do we really know everything there is to know about companion animals? Well, let's try out a few simple questions. These are the ones I asked myself back in 2009. What are the most common disorders of dogs and cats? Just a top three. An easy question, surely. What is the average lifespan of a dog or a cat in the UK? Do crossbreeds live longer than purebreds? For the most common disorders seen in dogs and cats, is the prevalence or, or the occurrence of these disorders more common in purebred dogs than in crossbreds, or in purebred cats than in crossbred cats? Well, when I was in practice, I thought I knew the answers to all of these. And then when I looked further to see what evidence or proof or information or data there was to support my beliefs, I began to realize that actually it was blind fate. I didn't really know the answers, I just thought I knew. And then I went thinking about where would we get this information from that could answer these questions. Surely we could use really high quality laboratory data or referral data. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, no, uh, these data are too skewed or biased. They don't reflect the general population of animals in the UK. Instead, we would have to start from scratch and do some sleuthing. So, I left practice and became a sleuth. Um, we decided at the Royal Veterinary College that we would try and build a system that would try to answer these basic questions about companion animals. To do so, we would need personnel with clinical skills. These could be students or qualified personnel. We would need uh, personnel with research skills, especially epidemiology, but also hugely motivated, because these are big topics. And we would need something else, data, veterinary primary data, and lots of it. And if we could tie up each of these three categories into a nice box, link them together, tie it in a nice bow, we could create something special that could answer many of the questions we have about companion animals. And this is what we did, and we've called it Vet Compass. So what exactly is it? Well, in essence, across the UK there are thousands of veterinary practices. And these veterinary practices see animals every day and record data on these animals. Vet Compass shares these data in a de-identified fashion, real time. So every day we collect data from hundreds and hundreds of veterinary practices. These data are merged and then analyzed by researchers um, to produce clinical papers that answer relevant questions. Um, but we also provide this information uh, to the general public and to veterinary surgeons and to researchers and owners in the format of posters. Um, which are either infographic or more technical posters. And increasingly we are now putting this information online in the form of intera interactive infographics. So these methods of disseminating information then spread information back to veterinary surgeons, but also to a wide range of other stakeholders, including breeders, kennel clubs, welfare bodies, scientists, governments, and most importantly of all, animal owners. For it is, after all, with the owners that most animals spend the majority of their time. So which data do VetCompass share? Well, 
Uh, the main message here is that the data are de-identified. We do not, nor do we want to be able to, identify individual owners or individual animals in the real world. Instead, we collect um, ID numbers, uh, which allow us to track animals over time within our data. Uh, we collect some partial postcodes, so we know which part of the country animals come from. Some demographic information, so we know about species and breed, age, whether animals are neutered. And then most importantly, clinical information. So this can be in the form of free text information, uh, where the veterinary surgeon writes down manually the results of their clinical examinations and their thoughts about diagnoses. Um, but we also collect coded information, where veterinary surgeons have selected a diagnosis or some other piece of information from a set of codes called the Venom Diagnoses Terms. These Venom terms are critical for Vet Compass and essential for any type of epidemiological analyses. The codes themselves are open access and they provide um, a system for categorizing species or breeds, reasons for visit, presenting complaints, procedures, diagnostic tests and diagnoses. These codes have been implemented in a wide number of computer systems used by different veterinary surgeons, including OrxWorks, EasyVetPro, Vet1, Telios, Verifac, Freedom and Helix. Practices that are part of VetCompass um, share data under an opt-out consent format. This means that clients are informed that their data are being shared by posters being displayed at the practices, leaflets being available, and also information provided on both the Vet Compass website and also the practice websites. There is a very wide spread of support for Vet Compass. The project has approval from uh, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, as well as ethics approval and data fully compliance with Data Protection Act. And pretty well every veterinary and welfare body in the UK and increasingly across Europe and the world um, have given stated support for Vet Compass. And this is critical because if we are to improve animal welfare, it means we must all work together, not just scientists, but also uh, welfare bodies, different groups and the general public. So how many practices are there currently in Vet Compass? Well, it's estimated there are about 5,000 practices in the UK and at the moment 470, so about 10% of all practices in the UK are part of Vet Compass. As you can see from the map, uh, the Vet Compass practices are distributed pretty well in line with the, the general spread of practices throughout the UK. So this means that Vet Compass data are fairly representative of the overall data collected from vet practices. So how many animals does 470 practices give us? Well, as of June 2015, those 470 practices had given us data on over 4 million unique animals. Those animals had uh, over 11 million individual episodes of care and experienced over 38 million treatments being used. More specifically, on a species level, we had 2 million dogs, 1.3 million cats, and over 300,000 rabbits and rodents. So these data are hugely useful for scientific studies that can look at some very rare breeds or some very rare diagnoses, as well as exploring common disorders and breeds. To date, these data have been analysed to produce a wide range of peer-reviewed publications that cover broad topics such as overall disorders in dogs and cats, and overall disorders in specific breeds, such as the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. These have also been used to look at the use of specific drugs, such as glucocorticoids, and also delving into specific diseases that are important for dogs and cats, such as diabetes or chronic kidney disease or heart disease. These 14 uh, peer-reviewed publications are just the tip of the iceberg, as many more are in the process of being published. Uh, many of these projects were collaborations with other groups such as universities including Cambridge, Bristol, Lincoln, Edinburgh, Sussex and Newcastle. And we also work very closely with veterinary groups including Medivet, Vets for Pets, Vets Now, PDSA, Dogs Trust as well as hundreds of other independent veterinary groups. As I said earlier, increasingly as well as providing information in the form of peer-reviewed publications, um, individual papers 
are summarized in an infographic. These infographics provide uh, summary information on the key questions behind the study and the key outcomes and are an excellent way of disseminating information on uh, the health in dogs and cats and the advice that we can learn from the studies Vet Compass is doing. The Vet Compass website is a very rich source of information um, and increasingly we are adding interactive tools which means that um, users, students, owners, welfarists can go online and search and answer questions of their own design. So we can look at uh, the dog and the different diseases broken down by body systems or location. We can search across the UK and look to see which regions have uh, preferences for specific breeds or compare the level of neutering or insurance or microchipping across regions in the UK. Vet Compass isn't just in the UK uh, but is now spreading. Australia already has an active Vet Compass program um, but there are, are growing systems uh, in development in a wide range of other countries including New Zealand, Spain, Germany, Denmark and most recently in the US. So back to our original questions. Did we know the answers to these? Well, in 2009, when I left practice, we didn't. Um, but thanks to Vet Compass, we now do know the answers to these particular questions. But there are so many more questions to answer. For your interest, the three most common disorders diagnosed in dogs are otitis externa, so sore ears, periodontal disease, bad teeth, and anal sac impaction. In cats, it's bad teeth, flea infestation, and obesity. The average lifespan of dogs and cats? Well, it's 12 years in dogs and 14 years in cats. Do crossbreds live longer than purebreds in dogs and in cats? The answer is yes. 1.2 years longer in dogs and 1.5 years longer in cats. This is quite a large difference. But when we look at the prevalence of the most common disorders, do we see a difference between purebreds and crossbreds? Well, this evidence here is not quite so clear. Um, in dogs, of the top 20 disorders, just three were higher, more common in purebreds than in crossbreds, whereas in cats there was no overall difference. So the message is that crossbred dogs do live longer, but there is less evidence that their health is better for the more common disorders. So that's Vet Compass. Uh, Vet Compass uh, is is a, a large team headed up by David Church, Professor David Church and Dr. Dave Broadbelt here at the ORVC and also with Professors Paul McGreevy and Associate Professor Peter Thompson uh, at Sydney University. We are very grateful to all the practices across the UK that are participating in Vet Compass and all the owners who are allowing data from their animals to be included. If you want further information on Vet Compass, please visit the website. And we thank the many supporters um, who trust Vet Compass to do studies that will ultimately improve the health and welfare of companion animals. Thank you for listening.